okay, this looks bad. By which I mean Hawkeye Episode 1 Thoughts. That has the... I hope there's at least one person... I, I don't hope that anybody doesn't like this show, but if they don't, if there's someone out there, I kind of hope they think of just opening the video with, okay, this looks bad. It's just... you got to be careful about putting that in your fiction. Anyway. This episode is called Never Meet Your Heroes. And spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video, and I might also spoil at least some of the comic, the the Hawkeye by Matt Fraction and David Aha run of since so much of this show will be, and these first two episodes are based on yeah. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes, especially videos made by new rockstar, screen rant, nerdist, CBR, screen crush, black nerd comedy, IGN, heavy spoilers, magic Maggie, emergency awesome, real James, and Jesse Gender. Not saying all of them did one or more videos on this specific episode or even show, just that they're good for Disney Plus shows that tie into the MCU. So, if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't make any excuses for Iron 2. And I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, and the episodes... And, yeah, these two episodes. So, yeah, this is, this is yet another episode I love. Again, I swear, the moment that the MCU makes a major mistake, I, I will be 100% honest about it. I'm not going to talk up something that isn't. Yeah. I've read all issues of the Matt Fraction, David Aha, Hawkeye run. Absolutely love it. Now, this is unfortunately yet another episode of Disney Plus MCU show where there are issues with the pacing I want to say it was heavy spoilers who said that the, it kind of meandered. And I I don't think I realized when I was watching, but the moment I heard him say that, I was like, I mean, it kind of did, yeah. And let's see. So, as of what if I've started noting if there are broad performances in these MCU. I'm, I'm not sure that's going to happen on this one. So, Yeah. Um, in in this one, no broad performances. Now, it is not an overall dark episode, but there are dark aspects to it. The acting is really strong, and there are great character moments for. Really, I would say all of the all of the major characters in this get at least one or more great character moments that really help define them and yeah and everyone behaves in character now uh, nando v movies pointed out that grief appears to be the main theme for phase four of the mcu and yeah i mean in this episode we learn that the reason that kate bishop is so determined to be i mean i guess i guess at this point i'm not sure she wants to be Hawkeye, but she dev or take that title. I mean, I think, I mean, she she does want to protect people. She wants to be more than what her mother, you know, the the comfortable life that her mother tries to provide for her, and yeah, that's motivated by her grief over her father. And Wisecrack pointed out the Phase Four is about millennials, and I mean. I, I suck at being able to tell what generation is called what, but I think Kate might be a millennial. Well, let's see. She, uh, wait, is this, this is post blip. So I get, so it's not, the year's not 2021 in the show because they're a few years ahead. Ah, uh, is it 23 or four maybe? So if Kate is 22, yeah, I guess she's a millennial. Isn't, isn't that, you know, born around the, the, yeah, 1999, 2000, a few years. Anyway, yeah, Kate Bishop, I think, is a millennial, and they'll have some fun with that. And cer certainly, 
the the bit where she she fires the arrow at the bell tower yeah that's that really has millennial you know screw up written all over it you know i saw a few people say you know everybody does this kind of thing in in high school or college you know but yeah and let's see so And yeah, so so I saw someone say that, you know, the, yeah, these first two episodes, I, yeah, well, a critic pointed out, you know, the, the show realizes Clint is, you know, perhaps the least interesting Avengers, so these two episodes focus more on Kate, it's more interesting, there's a buddy cop dynamic, since they're very different, and yeah, so we open on an argument between Kate's parents when she's still a child, arguing over money, and I think it was New Rockstar, certainly some have made the, the case that the money problems, they, they seem to disappear after this conversation. And you know what else disappears? Kate's father. And we're told he died, but we don't see it. So maybe he had a sizable life insurance and Eleanor Bishop, Kate's mother, yeah, took advantage of the whole Chitauri invasion to, you know, kill him or have him killed and frame it on the Chitauri so that, yeah, it, it's possible. I certainly, you know, I, for, for sure, there is no way you, you do not cast Vera Farmiga to just be of, you know, meh character. You, you give her something to work with. There, there has to be something more to her than what we've seen so far. Sweetie, we told you you can't listen in. Then how would I know what you're saying when I'm not there? Well, oh, considering this is the MCU, uh, mutants are coming up. Telepathy, maybe? I would do what I always do. Protect you. Are they gonna Uncle Ben this guy? I have a really bad feeling they're gonna Uncle Ben this guy. And I like the, the what's it called, long, long take. Always love me a long take. If, if it is, it, it, you know, I was, I was going to say if it's even remotely motivated or explained. It doesn't even have to be. I just, I love me a long take. Huge fan of Ryan De Palma. Love 1917 both times I watched it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, both. I didn't watch it a third time yet. And yeah, the long take of, you know, the Chitauri invasion with, you know, Kate looks up through, you know, they've got one of those, what was it, skylight? A window at the top of the ceiling. We see, you know, Chitauri invasion. Really good to get a civilian perspective on that. And I forget who it was, but one of the, someone here on YouTube pointed out that you know, it seems like, like, like the actual scene in the first movie, in the, the first Avengers movie, it's, it's like 19 minutes or something, which you'd think gets tiring, but no, the, the, of, of the invasion itself, you know, from when the, when the aliens start coming through the wormhole. And here, you know, they, they go right up to one of the last bits of it within like maybe a minute or two of the, explosions being heard and such. I think it's one of those, you know, witness, eyewitness testimony is, you know, incredibly, you, you cannot rely on it because it is incredibly painted by personal bias and, but biases rather. But the emphasis on the wrong syllable. And, I mean, the, the, really, this is what she remembers of it, you know. She remembers that there were explosions and she was scared, and then she saw Clint Barton Hawkeye be heroic, and, and, you know, he did save her life. He just, he didn't realize he was saving her specifically, but one of the arrows he fired did save her life. And, yeah, you know, we can understand why she starts to idolize him, which... 
I'm pretty sure it's different in the comics. I haven't read all of the Kate Bishop comics, but it's a good change. You know, I've, I've been saying that about the MCU for, for quite some years now. I think they do a really great job of... They, they know what they what will work in one of these movies and what they have to adjust and mix and match. And, and yeah, they killed Kate's father already. And... Let's see. What if they come back? They won't come back. Lady, you are headed for disappointment. Okay, so the opening credits kind of make it seem like the Hawkeye in question is Kate, but it is really cool to see this kind of visual storytelling getting up to speed with where Kate is now all these years later. I love how inspired and informed the visuals in the opening are from the Matt Fraction, David Aha, Hawkeye comics. You know, it, the the it's it's the kind of thing that wouldn't work as well in live action because you go from these like silhouettes to these all all these trophies. And you can't really do that in live action as well. But the moment it's it's this stylized animation, you know, no one's gonna look at the opening and be like, it's like they filmed something real. No, it's it's heavily stylized, and that works really well. I yeah. I'm a little glad that Kate couldn't open the door with the lockpicks because it's really cool seeing her climb up the wall. And I like that, you know, she she fires her shot at the bell and doesn't quite get the bell ringing. So she rigs up another arrow, and, you know, at first it seems like the bell is okay, but then it starts to break more and more, and just, yeah. The, the... I kind of enjoy the fact that if you just let that first shot be it, you know, if she, if she said, you know what, I fired a shot, didn't ring the bell, that's not really... Look, a bet's a bet, but I, I gave it a shot. Literally. One shot. But because she was determined, she ends up breaking the thing. And I have to admit, when I saw the, the like the trailers and ads, it looked to me like Clint saw her fire the the arrow at the at the bell tower. But no, it's like I want to say campus security or something, which you know you can understand. It's like I, I mean they 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 just got to figure out what what just happened. You know this this thing started breaking. So yeah. Okay, this is bad. Are you sure it doesn't just look bad? I have to disagree with at least some of the audience that we see in the show. Rogers the musical kicks ass. That that looks so much fun. And I'm 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 kidding. It looks absolutely terrible. You can kind of tell when a when a musical in fiction is made by people who do or do not like musicals. And yeah, it's it's yeah. And Lila Barton confirmed to us that Clint, in the MCU, like in the comics, uses hearing aids. And I do appreciate that it is, ah, uh, what's the word? Like, he is, ah, uh, what's the word? You know, it's it's explained by all the, the wild things that he, it's, you know, you, we, we see a brief, you know, there's a clip of Avengers 1, Avengers Age of Ultron, and then Endgame, and it is like, yeah, those probably did do a number on his very human ears. You know, like, Steve Rogers, I get the sense that his entire body is, like, superhuman. You know, I, I want to say it's the Birdman who points out that if you had super strength but not super durability, you couldn't lift or punch something that you wouldn't normally be able to because your body would break. So, you know, he's got... Obviously, he has super durability as well. I figure that probably goes for his... What are they called again? Ear... Uh, yeah, I, th I think you know what... It, eardrums, is that what they're called? I, f I feel like that's what they're called. And, uh, you know, Tony's got the helmet. Thor's a god. Uh, uh, Hulk, also superhuman. Durability... I mean, I guess maybe Natasha, you, you know, you, one, one could imagine she would also had have gotten some some issues there, but she didn't swing through a window like Clint did in 
it's Avengers 1 and she wasn't there for the she wasn't that close to him when the bit we see from Avengers 2 happen I'm pretty sure not not downplaying like she made the ultimate sacrifice not not downplaying her importance there and you know Clint still really misses Natasha feels guilty that she sacrificed herself after he went around the world for five years ronining up the place and we see Kate arrive in New York you know you we're gonna have to replace that that clock tower I think it was a bell tower. The dean said it had a bell and a clock, and overachiever that you are, you destroyed both. In her defense, the plot of the show would not work if she wasn't in New York, if she was still at the school, so... I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the... Like, like she was supposed to stay at the school. Or wait, would she have gone for the holidays? Either way, I don't... I'm, I've never been to a private school, so I would not know. I appreciate that clearly Kate's mother, does, Eleanor, does care about Kate. Her worries, she, you know, she had, yeah, she worries about her. She has concerns. It's not, she, she, you know, the the MCU could easily have dipped into the the trope of the obnoxious parent who just won't let the kid be, you know, considering that they kind of are dipping into the the step parent is evil trope. Which, come on, are we really not past that at this point? And Kate doesn't love that Jack is around, and, you know, the swords hint that he is Swordsman, which I believe the name they, they give here corresponds to the character of Swordsman in the comics. I'm, I'm almost 100% certain, actually, yeah. And Clint gets a comped meal at the restaurant, and he doesn't look comfortable about it, guilt over Ronan, maybe. And I, I love that Kate is dressed in a way that people keep thinking she works there, and then she uses that to her advantage. And she finds out Eleanor and Jack are getting married, and she is not a fan. He can be quite determined. I have a feeling that's going to turn out to be a bad thing, like he's going to be a villain in part because he's obsessed. And Kate talks to Eleanor about the engagement, meets Lucky the pizza dog. And evidently, Kate hasn't gotten past her desire to eavesdrop when her mother's arguing with someone. And Eleanor doesn't even react with surprise when she realizes Kate was listening. You know, she she's like, was that guy threatening you? I don't even know what he was. You know, she's not like, are you still listening? She's just like, you know what? Listening, fine, whatever. And Kate goes into the kitchen, picks up a plate so she can walk into an area she isn't supposed to, pretending to work there since she looks like she does. For our first item tonight, we will be traveling back in time. That's a fun way to phrase that. There is time travel in this universe, and uh, I forget who, but someone else here on YouTube pointed out, you know, it's it's a, uh, I want to say, tritera, Triceratops head, which might be an indication we're getting, I want to say it's called the Savage Lands, which... I am 100% down for that. And Kate claims that Gary sent her, not realizing she's talking to Gary, because the other guy went and got Gary. That's that's such a great... I, uh, I thought I was the only one working down here tonight. Uh, Gary sent me. Oh, okay. And then, you know, a couple of minutes pass, and, you know, someone else shows up. And then when that guy says, I'm Gary, then we see, you know, oh, the other guy's right there, because <laughs> she didn't think to herself... Maybe he's going to check, you know, and and it's it's great. You know, she didn't pull the, the name Gary out of thin air. She heard one of the other, one of the, oh, one of the actual servers say it. So, you know, as, as saying that that was the boss. So, yeah. And, you know, Gary's like, who are you? You know what, Gary? That's the problem. You don't even know my name. This isn't working out. I quit. Yeah, this is definitely the Kate Bishop from the Mad Fraction comics. That, that is one hundred percent perfect. Like, she kind of, she didn't completely think things through, so she got herself into a bad situation. But then she doesn't panic. She thinks of something. It's not always the smartest thing to do, but she's not stupid. She thinks of something, and then she, you know, she doesn't like. Um, you see, the thing is, you know, no, no, she's just. You don't even know my name. I quit. Just. Absolutely perfect. And, and at the end of the day, he just wanted her gone. So as long as she leaves, you know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna like run after. No, I don't. 
I have no idea who you are. Is this and Kate sees some Russians walking by. Could those possibly be non-tracksuit tracksuit mafia? And we see Ronin's sword being sold at the auction and an explosion at the auction. It cuts to Elnor, who's like, does this really have to happen every time I throw a charity ball? And you know, one of the other one of my fellow YouTubers pointed out she didn't look particularly surprised. You know, so so maybe she knew that the tracksuit mafia were gonna hit. And might even be in on it. And yeah, a bunch of tracks of mafia come through the whole vape blue. Let's go, bro. And Kate fights the Ronin suit and runs in as Ronin fights, protects people, gets them to safety, and beats up some of the tracks of mafia, mostly using wine bottles as weapons. I really love that she goes back and forth between being in control of the situation and kind of out of her depth. That's exactly right for Kate Bishop at this point. And, you know, she lucks her way into an imitation of Nat's signature move with the thigh thrown, only kind of pulls it up. And, you know, she, let's see, I, she jumps up to, you know, so, to, so she can get her legs and feet up into, you know, the, the, like, she's, she's shorter than the guy she's fighting. So she needs some help so that she can, you know, go for the head. With, with her feet. And so she jumps up, grabs onto the thing, and then she, like, kind of... I mean, was she trying to kick him and then, like, it ended up with her wrapping her thighs around her? You know, some people were into that. And, you know, then she, like, her... her You know, the, the thing she grabbed isn't meant to hold the weight of a person, so it falls down and it kind of works, you know... And one of the tracks of Mafia got the watch and then fights with Lucky, helps him, saves him from cars. If I recall, in the comic, one of the cars actually did hit Lucky. He makes it, he survives, but is like, you know, and, and it's it's Clint who saves him, but it's a good, you know, the part of the point of the show is to get people on board with, Kate Bishop as, you know, the new Hawkeye, as as the person that's going to take over for, yeah, so, so that she can be a young Avenger, and, yeah. So, it's important that we like her, and the, the, yeah, you know, save the, save the cat, save the dog, kind of thing, and, but yeah, you know, Clint saves her, Clint saves the dog in the comic, and gets it to a vet, and tells the vet, you are going to save this dog's life. Even though the vet's like, I, I can't make any promises, you know. But yeah, I'm I'm not surprised that they didn't have the dog get run over in their Christmas show for you know, I mean I mean, this is this is Disney Plus, it's not Star. So you're supposed to be able to watch this if you're like thirteen years old. I'm not hugely surprised they didn't you know, actually go through with the dog getting hit. Yeah. Awesome. One of the tracks of Mafia really is Kazi. Holy crap. I have to wonder if they're going to go as far with that character as they do in the comic. Hypothetically, it might just be that he's there for those of us who recognize him from the comic, but I'm, I'm you know, I've, I've got my fingers crossed. I, I'm, he's, he's a really, really cool antagonist. And that's not a spoiler because he already is an antagonist in this. And Lila Barton thinks it's cool that a ninja saved a dog, but Clint really does not like Ronan being seen. I love that Kate kind of talks to Lucky as if she's expecting him to answer in English. I mean, you know, she is basically just thinking out loud, but she does say, Hey, Lucky, do you think, you know, just obviously she's not actually expecting him to answer in English. You know, it's a, it's a pet owner thing, talking to the pet. And he loves pizza, just like in the comic. And... I'm really glad that they didn't, you know, there's no way they actually fed pizza to a dog. That's, that would be terrible for it. They, what, what I'm almost 100% certain happened is they, they made a rubber chew toy in the, in the shape of a pizza. And then they had someone like paint it to look like a slice of pizza. Note that, you know, if you go back and rewatch, we don't see it eat. It, you know, it, it picked up the slice with its mouth. And then the camera cuts away. You know, we don't we don't see it like actually chewing and such. Just 
picks it up. I, th I think it has to bite a couple of times to be able to pick it up in its mouth. And then we move on. And yeah. Monogrammed butterscotch. It's going to have a baby? Armand III has been killed. He should have been more specific when he said that there were too many Armands in the family. We got eyes everywhere. Ears everywhere else. And Kate Bishop is having more trouble fighting the tracksuit mafia this time, now that they knew she was coming and have been looking for her. I like that at first we see from Kate's perspective when Clint comes in to, to fight to help her. Which, you know, you can also understand why he's like, oh, for crying out loud, I'm dealing with a kid here. You know, the first, like, at first he's, you know, he finds out, oh, she, you know, someone stole the Ronin suit and went around, you know, saved a dog and, and fought some, some tracks with Mafia. But then when he meets her, the first thing he sees is that she locked herself in a car from from these guys, you know, coming coming to attack her. You know, that's... It doesn't exactly scream, I can do this myself. You know, that's, I don't blame her. Don't, not, not at all. She just started, you know, okay, she took martial arts since she was five. There's a difference between martial arts in like a school environment and going out and trying to fight people who, like the tracksuit mafia, beat people up for a living, you know. So, yeah, and they're, they're bigger than her. There's more of them than... Yeah. And the episode ends with the two Hawkeyes meeting. Very cool. Matt Fraction is actually a consulting something or other on the show, according to the end credits. Yeah, I just... I noticed that his name, and then it said consulting, and then I started to make the note, and by the time, you know... Yeah, didn't pick up the... the exactly... The exact title he had. So a number of people are theorizing that Eleanor Bishop is really Madame Mask, which would be a really cool twist. I definitely do hope we get some Madame Mask, especially in this show, dealing with, with Kate and... yeah. And... that brings us to... the second... So... Yes, Hawkeye Episode 2 thoughts. I'm just going to write down there. And this episode is called Hide and Seek. And I already went through all the intro stuff for episode one, so I'm going to go ahead and guess that you didn't skip past all of that to this episode. So... We did not find... Oh, right. Actually, real quick. One of the... Yeah, one of the critics said by the end of the second episode, we're a third of the way through the show, there still isn't a clear main villain yet, and that's a problem. I mean, MCU has had a villain problem pretty much from the start, and the... Okay, maybe not the original. Maybe not right away. I guess the, the first phase had fairly solid villains. But starting phase two, they definitely had a villain problem. And yeah, it kind of seems like the these Disney Plus shows, it's... Yeah, it's kind of a thing here as as well. So it's, you know, we're I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get more. I don't think that Echo is going to turn out to be the big bad. I, I feel like she's... I think the the dramatic reveal of her at the end of this episode was more to say that, it, it, you know, in, in the comics, I believe it's Daredevil that she goes after. It looks like here it's going to be Clint. R it's going to be Ronan, maybe. Which, huh, come to think of it, I mean, if, if her family were bad guys, it is entirely possible that Ronan killed them, that nobody lied to her about who killed her parents. So, so you know. I feel like she's going to be the right hand of the actual bad guy, but these two episodes, they're playing it coy. You know, maybe it's Swordsman, but then it seems way too obvious that, you know, there's way too much pointing t towards him being the... It's, yeah, both, you know, bo both as a, as a... as For us watching the show and for Kate trying to solve the mystery, like, why would Jack make it so obvious? He's... He's trying to draw attention away from, you know, someone else, possibly Eleanor. 
So we, yeah, two episodes in, we don't know what the deal is with the watch. You know, I've, I've seen some theorize it's connected to Tony because of the colors on it. And we know that he had, you know, in, in Civil War, he has a wristwatch that turns into a, a small gauntlet that he, you know, he used it to briefly stun Bucky. So, you know, it, it might be more than just a watch. And, you know, I, I saw one person say it can't be Dr. Stephen Strange's because that watch had sentimental value to him, but it wasn't really worth anything to anybody. Like, like it's broken, un unless somebody fixed it. You know, I don't know. I guess it's possible that a pre-Dr. Manhattan, Dr. Manhattan got his hands on it. Maybe Silar, I don't know. I started taking martial arts when I was five, so a year ago. In the Matt Fraction comics, he actually does joke that she's like nine years old. And I, I'm not 100%, I, I want to say she's around, she's definitely in her 20s at that point as well. So, yeah. And Kate is immediately trying to learn from Clint, trying to impress him, and talking to herself, trying to calm herself down. Kids should be in school. Can you sign my bow? <laughs> you're actually my favorite Avenger, so you're the one. I'm just kidding. I'm personally a big fan of Clint. And the tracksuit mafia are enemies of Ronan. That's a clever way to work it into this, since in the comics it's completely different circumstances that I'm not sure will work here. Con you know, this Clint wants to be with his family. In the comic, you know, Clint is basically just... You know, the, the comic, if you open the, the comic, one of the first things it'll say is Clint Barton, a.k.a. Hawkeye, is the world's greatest sharpshooter. He's an Avenger. This is what he does when he's not being an Avenger. And, you know, he's he's he buys an apartment and tries to protect the people in it because the tracksuit mafia want the apartment and they're going to kick everybody out. So... You know, that's, I really don't think that's going to happen on this show because he would kind of have to, he would either have to stay in New York for that, which, you know, he wants to go back to the farm to his family, or he would be, I guess he could hire someone else to take care of it. I mean, it. I guess it's possible that Kate herself might do something like that, but yeah, you know, that's how he ends up on the Traction Mafia enemy list in, in the comic, and, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to make them Ronin enemies. The, yeah. And, yeah, the Traction Mafia throw Molotov cocktails, the Hawkeyes have to leave, and, you know, Kate tried to put out the fire by shooting the fire extinguisher, but it doesn't work out. Well, you know, it's, as, as other, YouTube, other YouTubers have pointed out, it's because it's pressurized. You know, if, if, you, if you poke a hole in it, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna fly all over the place. You know, it's it's not gonna just like spray out the the ah f you know yeah the the and the the and you know fire yeah the the stuff that it uses to put out the fire and you know yeah she's <laughs> Clint wouldn't do that because he's. He's a bit more familiar with the the kind of, you know, I mean, let's be honest. She's probably never had to, like, pick up a fire extinguisher in her life or, or really deal with it. You know, she's not she doesn't have that much experience. You know, I, I really appreciate she's got skills, but not experience. And that's where, you know, Clint has both. So he can, you know, I'm, I'm not sure he would be willing to take the time to teach her how to fire a bow and arrow. You know, he does that with his daughter, but he's not gonna, she's not gonna go, end up becoming a superhero. You know, he does that because it's a, yeah, it's his daughter. He loves her. He wants to spend time with her and do bonding things. And yeah, it's the kind of thing, you know, when I was a kid, my father taught me how to shoot a bow and arrow. You know, doesn't mean that he... Yeah, it does. The fact that a parent teaches their offspring to shoot a bow and bone arrow doesn't mean that they expect them to go out and become a hero. It just it's a good bonding experience. It's something that you know if, if the parent knows how to do it, 
then you know it's, it's, it is the kind of thing you can teach. There are some things that are extremely difficult to teach, but yeah, bow and arrow. It's it's a good way to teach focus, patience. Uh, you know the the yeah. And I, I like that, you know, Clint breaks the window and catches one of the Molotov cocktails, throws it back, and one of the tracks in my is like on fire. It's like, oh, no, you know, and the other, bro, you were on fire, bro. Katie's so excited about being around Clint, Avenger supplies, Avenger safe houses. She keeps being disappointed. The supplies are like Neosporin and, and uh, what, are they, what are they called? Like, um... Yeah, the, the, anyway, you know, it's, it's stuff to clean wounds and, you know, Tony sold Avengers Tower, which, you know, bringing that up now, like the, the Fantastic Four movie is on the way and it's also possible that it's being used by a, a crime lord or something. I, you know, I've seen people theorize that when, uh, I forget... Yeah, I, th I think it was in episode one. The, you know, when when the, when they're selling Ronan stuff, you know, he says, oh, you know, Ronan almost put an end to organized crime in New York or some, something like that. And, you know, some people are saying, oh, the head of organized crime in New York, that's Kingpin, you know, which, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. In, in the comics, that's Kingpin. But I don't, I don't know if we're really going to get more... Charlie Cox Daredevil with Vincent D'Onofrio Kingpin, but I could maybe see, maybe they're setting up Madame Mask as the New York head of organized crime, but I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. I haven't actually watched any of the Netflix, uh, Netflix Marvel shows. Uh, I don't have Netflix, never had, not sure I ever will. I guess, I don't know. If it starts to, I got Disney Plus specifically because it has MCU stuff. Like, there's stuff you're gonna have trouble following in the movies if you don't watch the the Disney Plus shows. You know, so yeah, the the I kind of hope that they, uh, yeah. Anyway. I actually do know a place, 10 blocks away. Would a bag of money know a place? Absolutely perfect. That is, yeah, that's, that's Kate Bishop. She knows, you know, she's not going to, like, just despair over Clint not having a lot of respect for her. She's going to prove her how useful she is. You know, when, when someone doesn't think much of her, she doesn't, like, just complain about it, she tries to prove how good she is at stuff, because she knows that she deserves more respect than she often gets at first. Yes, Clint, you may enter my apartment. Don't you need my keys? She's ping-ponging back and forth between giddy excitement at being near her favorite adventure, adventure and being frustrated at how he treats her and talks to her. And Clint put on fireman gear so he can get in and steal the suit and then leaves. Getting kind of a Hitman Agent 47 vibe. I like that Kate does acknowledge when she makes a mistake. She would be a really annoying character if not. You know, she... she when, when her mother talked about the, the, you know, bell tower, clock tower, she was like, okay, my bad, you know. And when... I, I want to say... Let's see, it was because Clint points out that, you know, it's it's danger, like, uh, the Ronin thing, yeah, I don't remember the exact thing, but, you know, she points out, he, he pointed out something that she did that ended up causing problems, and she's like, you know what, fair enough, and she tries to make, you know, she tries to make it right again, instead of just complaining or something, and Clint cleans Kate's wound and you know a, a chunk of the Matt Fraction David Aha comics are about Hawkeye run are about dealing with having gotten beaten up so I really appreciate you know there there are a lot of MCU movies where you know cleaning a wound would never come up so but that's that's Clint 
and Kate correctly guesses that Clint has a lead. He doesn't want to tell her because he doesn't want to get her more involved than she already is. He's trying to be responsible. And Lila can tell that Clint is in trouble. I like the the thing with the the you know the her older brother says that he's in charge, and the moment that he's out of earshot. Clint is like, no, no, Lila, you're in charge. Forget what he says, you know. Which is also a very sibling kind of thing to do, arguing over who's in charge, who's, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're just not going to listen to me, are you? I want to, but no. Yeah, this show really nails their relationship in the comics. And, yeah, Clint's ears have been damaged from the Avengers activities, and there isn't a Clint Barton you know cosplayer but there is a Katniss Everdeen and I do appreciate also the note that like they do look alike you know if you if you just look at you know in the in the in the MCU with Clint's you know I, I get it it's a stealth suit he's not gonna wear purple when he's trying to sneak around obviously but yeah the the I mean uh, essentially Kate thought Oh, it's a it's a gender swap Clint Barton Hawkeye, but no, no, it's it's Katniss Everdeen, and she's awesome. So there's you know absolutely awesome character. Love those four movies and those three books. And Kate tries to convince Clint. Feels like something right out of the comics. She does get Clint's number and vice versa. And Jack is annoyingly perceptive about Kate's hostility. And Clint isn't allowed in until he agrees to LARP. There isn't something exactly like this LARP in the comics, but this is the kind of thing that would have happened in the, that could have happened in the comics. Clint getting into an awkward situation that he feels really uncomfortable in, but has to go through. And Clint does a really great job fighting the LARPers. Come on, man, you're a superhero in real life. This is as close as I'm gonna get. I'm ever gonna get to being one. Which, I mean, he's like a firefighter in real life. That is a real life hero, but, you know, that, like, in the MCU, I'm sure a, a lot of regular people don't hold firefighters and cops in as high regard. Well, okay, not all cops deserve to be held in high regard, but, you know, cons yeah, when there are actual gods and superhumans around. I I really liked, you know, Kate gets out the, the stuff, you know, Clint specifically told her, only use it in emergency, you know, maybe this is why Captain Marvel, you know, when talking to Nick Fury, like, emergencies, only emergencies, you know, maybe she knew Kate Bishop or something, you know, premonition, I don't know, and, you know, she's, like, texting, please don't pretend you're, diff you're, you're busy with your friends because I know you don't have any, and then calls. Okay, so I was kind of mean, but I think it worked. Not exactly. And Kate Bishop awkwardly stumbles through talking to the cop. I, I really like, you know... Is this Kate Bishop? It depends on who's asking. And he gives his title. And then it depends on what you're asking. Again, 100%, this is, this is Kate from the comics. I'm actually at work right now. I mean, if you want to get super technical, she didn't say she was at her own work. She is at her mom's work. But then her mom does say that Kate does work. For, you know, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really look like she already does. It seems like she's going to, but anyway. And the cop hangs up after talking to her. gets the distinct sense that... She's going to be a real pain in his ass, and he's going to end up wishing desperately she would just leave L.A. I mean, New York. There's a Grills in the comics. He's a bit of a different character than this, but yeah, I, I hope they... I almost hope we don't see Grills again in this show, considering what happens in the comic. Jesus, not those idiots. <laughs> like others, I really love how she's, like... This, ah, uh, yeah, Clint's wife is this, like, she knows so much about the his Avengers activities and, and such. She knows his enemies and such. 
Which also just like, you know, hypothetically, if someone calls her and tries to intimidate her and speaks in this vaguely Eastern European accent and uses the word bro, she's going to know exactly who it is, you know, so it's, if, if the person can handle it, it's maybe sometimes a good idea to tell your significant other that you're a superhero. I'm going to get my sword. And Kate is frustrated. Jack keeps letting her win. And then when he pretends to let his guard down, she goes for the face. And he parried just like she knew he would because he is much better with a sword than he's letting on to Eleanor. I really like how Eleanor, she's being the adult in the room. She's being 100%. Like, I don't think she says a single thing that doesn't make sense, at least from the point of view of someone who doesn't think that Jack is, you know. Like, he says, you went... You know what? Kate makes a good point. And she's like, all she said, you know, I've, ah, crap. I've, I don't remember the exact words she used, but she's like, all she said was that that's not an argument. <laughs> and Eleanor wants Kate to work for her in the long term. Kate wants to prove that she doesn't need her family's help. She wants to prove that she can, you know, stay on her own, like in the comic and like many rich kids. And the Traction Mafia members take Clint after beating him up some, but apparently they want him alive. Their female boss does. They say she wants him alive. Oh, actually, I guess that might just they might be talking about Echo, even if she isn't the boss. Yeah, we'll we'll see. And Kate calls Clint twice, and the second time someone picked up, and she thinks it's Clint, but that's one of the Traction Mafia. She keeps being unlucky with someone being on the phone that she thinks is Clint, but it's someone else. But then this time she tracked the phone. To find them and you know someone pointed out so you know she's using like the and and a security app that her mother de developed or, or you know her mother's company developed but it's like wow that's a lot that is kind of privacy invading to have an app like that so it's it seems kind of sketchy so maybe her security company isn't completely like yeah, it's it's pretty shady for for it to, yeah. And one of the tracks of mafia gets really defensive when Hawkeye criticizes their location, which is also like they're you know they're they're not always intimidating. They're sometimes kind of comical in in the well. No, yeah, yeah. I, I would say depending on the situation, sometimes they are kind of intimidating and intense. And Clint unties himself, but they have guns. And then Kate crashes through the ceiling. Honestly, I thought that the episode would end on the cliffhanger of her just having... Her having landed right in front of them. But then we also see them tied up. We meet Echo, and that's the cliffhanger. And... Yeah, I already mentioned, you know, maybe she lost family to Ronan. Or was lied to, told that Clint killed her family like Yelena was. You know, in the comics, she was lied to and told, I want to say, Daredevil killed her family. And if I recall, it was Kingpin who killed her parents and then told her Daredevil did it, trained her to be an assassin. And it, it is super cool that we're getting more deaf characters in the MCU. I hesitate to say heroes. Makari was a hero. Echo, we're going to have to wait and see. But for now, you know, heroes don't really work with the tracksuit mafia. You know, I, I figure she's... She's going to start out as an assassin and go through a redemption arc. You know, she's getting her own Disney Plus show, so, yeah. And some YouTubers theorize each of the episodes of the show will be a day, since it starts with five days left until Christmas. And so far, yeah, I, I believe that these first two episodes each are roughly one day. Like, not certainly not that much more than that. The monogrammed butterscotch, so it might really have been Jack who killed Armand the Third. And yeah, New Rockstars thinks it's too obvious. You know, thinks Jake Jack is trying to get Kate to focus on him, so he doesn't realize who else is involved. I would like for the show to subvert the step parent is actually evil trope that they're invoking with him so far. And you know, Kate is basically like a surrogate daughter for Clint. She brings his vulnerability and heart to the surface. Not yet, not much yet, mind you, but in, you know, over the course of the show. He's usually not comfortable with a lot of attention, and Clint uses catch and release against the tracks of Mafia, something that his wife points out is one of Natasha's moves, is what she did in the f her first scene in the original Avengers. She let herself get captured. 
you know, Natasha and Clint both prefer to work alone and it seems like it might screw up his attempt that Kate Bishop drops in. So I'm thinking over the course of this miniseries, he will start to accept working with her. Now, depending on who you ask, the stuff Kate Bishop says about how people today want sincerity is either referring to earlier MCU stuff or to the Snyderverse. It's going to be hard for Clint to relate to some of Kate's rich personal experiences. She lived with a squirrel in Korea. Now, that is everything that I had written down. Let me just really briefly see if I can remember something that I didn't write down that I wanted to say. So far, I'm really... I, I agree that, you know, I, th I think Heavy Spoiler said both episodes kind of meander. I hope they get better at that in the next, you know, that the next four episodes won't meander. I do think that the the show is showing a lot of promise. The, the you know, great action, great acting, characterization. Like, I like the mystery, the Easter eggs. I'm really, really glad Clint is finally getting his own thing. You know, it only took them a decade, but now every single original Avenger has their own, you know, in the case of Clint, not movie, but it's a miniseries. It's longer than a movie. So, the, let's see. Some some people say it's it's frustrating that it's so much of a handing off of the torch, passing the torch kind of thing, handing off the baton, I guess it's the phrase that it's clearly Kate is a big part of the focus, at least. I, I saw at least one person say, you know, they both get a pretty decent amount of screen time in these first two episodes. But, yeah, I, I think it is... I mean, I've been excited for Kate Bishop to come to the MCU since the moment I heard this thing was, you know, when, yeah, when they started talking about there's going to be a Hawkeye miniseries, so... And uh, no, I'll, I'll admit that I hadn't read the Matt Fraction, David Aha, Hawkeye run before that, but then I heard that it was going to be based on that, and yeah, I, I read those on my commute. And yeah, the... the I, I'm i really excited for more of, of Kate Bishop. I think, you know, she's she's a character with a lot of enthusiasm and like energy she she you know she's she's never boring and yeah like i i i think it's going to be really great for for the mcu to have her and i don't know i i guess i feel like with avengers 2 and 4 i think we have gotten some really really great stuff with clint I'm I'm really happy that he is part of this show, and I think it's a really great idea to explore the enemies he made as Ronan. I don't mind too much if this is mostly going to be the Kate Bishop show, and I think they did a great job casting. I, Haley Steinfeld. I think the only other thing I know from her is she she voiced Gwen in Spider-Verse, and she does an incredible job there as well. I'm really glad she's now getting to be a live-action hero as well. You know, it's it's super cool that she got to do that voice, and I love that movie, don't get me wrong. Now that she's actually doing action scenes also, that's really, really cool, you know. Now, let's see, the... the but, but yeah, you know, it's... Even just based on these two episodes and interviews where she and Jeremy Renner both appear, the two have great chemistry and she really gets the character. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for more episodes. You know, it's gonna, it's, it's yet again, it's difficult to wait an entire week to, to get more Disney Plus MCU content, but that is absolutely everything that I had to say about these first two episodes. So, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.